March of 2019, I made a video about this same company. It was very business focused. I was talking about how European trade laws resulted in lower sales, raised their debt, and how they made a comeback after filing for bankruptcy in 2001. I'd say it's very much like most of the videos you'll see on this channel. But it turns out that historically, this company has been so corrupt and so controversial that many viewers thought that I was almost irresponsible for not making that the main focus of my video. It took me by surprise that Ironically, I found myself in my own little controversy because I didn't properly address their controversies. I don't know if I'm explaining it right. To be honest, it's all a little confusing to me still. I don't know, it's really not that big of a deal, but I figured I'd mention it here because it is my motivation for making this video. If this company is so controversial that I get attacked for talking about anything outside of those controversies, there must be some pretty terrible stuff here. Going back to the beginning, on one one end, we have Miner Cooper Keith. He was a businessman involved in raising cattle in Texas until his family secured this contract to build this 100 mile long railroad in Costa Rica. It proved to be quite a project too. It took almost 20 years, there were thousands of debts, financial issues, and once it was finished, no one even wanted to ride on it. Luckily, during the lengthy construction period, he bought some banana plantations and planted all these banana trees along the tracks partially to help feed the workers. Since since the train was getting very few passengers, he figured he could instead use it to transport those bananas, and very quickly he transformed it into solely a banana company. On the other end, we have Captain Lorenzo Baker and Andrew Preston. In 1870, Baker made a trip to Jamaica, bought 160 bunches of bananas, brought them up to New Jersey, and sold them through Preston, who was a local produce broker. It turned out to be a profitable arrangement for everyone, so they continued working together and 15 years later formed the Boston Fruit Company. Now, selling bananas can be a very sensitive business. For example, if the plantation is caught in a drought, you may not have any of them to sell. If there's a political issue in the country or region, that can cause uncertainty. If you're inefficient while shipping them, they can go bad. No one wants to eat a rotten banana. In 1899, the two companies felt that they can mitigate these risks by merging together. That combined company was called United Fruit, which as of 1990 is called Chiquita. So now we have United Fruit. It's a US company, first put on the stock market in 1903, but they get their bananas from Central America. I mean, if you're looking to grow bananas, that's just the place to do it. It's hard to deny. The heat, the rain, the soil, just make them grow better there, which makes the shipping process especially important. Soon after the merger, they built this cargo ship that was refrigerated, practically a game changer. They would paint the ship's white to reflect the heat and keep everything cool appropriately, they later became known as the Great White Fleet. Alright, on to the controversies. Banana Republics. I don't think this is a great name for the clothing store because there's a very negative meaning behind it. It's a term that's used to describe a country that's very dependent on foreign countries buying a single product from them. Typically, these countries are in Central America and that product is bananas. See, in the early 1900s, all of a sudden, there were all these US companies trying to get bananas from that area. There were a few large banana companies emerging, but the most significant one was United Fruit. Now that they had a great shipping method, their new big concern was simply growing more and more bananas to ship. I typically don't seek out discussion about 20th century Central American politics, but it's a big part of this. When United Fruit was somewhat new and growing in the early 1900s, these countries generally did not have great ethical leaders. It was common for these governments to make deals where the banana company would build infrastructures such as telephone lines in exchange for either land or tax breaks, both of which would help them grow because those tax breaks would translate to higher profits, which in many cases were used to buy more land. After years of this, United Fruit, along with the other banana companies, would have significant control over the country's land, telephones, railroads, all of it, which made them banana republics. 
tracks. As you can imagine, the treatment of the workers at these plantations was questionable. That's a sketchy one, hard to confirm the details of it, but it is connected to another controversy. This one has been labeled the Banana Massacre. It occurred in Colombia in 1928 when the banana pickers who worked for United Fruit organized and went on strike. Their demands seem pretty reasonable to me, just typical stuff. Eight hour work days, six day work weeks, higher wages, United Fruit was doing this thing where they would pay their workers with food coupons instead of cash and the workers didn't like it. Outsiders were coming out to support them and it was turning into this huge political thing. United Fruit was getting bad publicity, losing money, and they just wanted it to end. But instead of simply giving in to their demands, they asked the US government to send some soldiers to break it up. The Colombian government didn't like the idea of the US interfering, so they took it upon themselves to take action. Very excessive action. The details of what happened are debated, but the end result was Colombian soldiers firing into crowds of strikers, killing somewhere between 50 and 2,000 people. My gosh, it was just a crazy event involving United Fruit. But moving ahead from the incident, by the 1940s, United Fruit had a huge supply of bananas. They had a decent enough way to transport them to the US with their great white fleet, but the missing element was an effective way to sell them. Today, we would just think, how hard is it to sell bananas? Everyone buys them all the time. Well, United Fruit is kind of the reason they're so popular today. In 1944, as a genius marketing move, they started branding their bananas under the name Chiquita, and to go along with it, they introduced an aggressive ad campaign featuring Miss Chiquita. It became a widely known character and the song because it was played hundreds of times a day on the radio. The idea of it was to promote not just the Chiquita brand, but bananas in general. They were by no means a popular fruit, so they set out to inform everyone about the health benefits and the convenience of bananas. Bananas are a solid food that doctors now include in baby's diet. And it was very successful. They now had the supply and the demand, and they were looking good. I mention all this because there was a bump in the road forming right about the same time that leads me to their next controversy, Jacobo Arbenz. This one takes place in Guatemala, most definitely one of the banana republics. By the 1950s, United Fruit controlled 42% of their land, in addition to their telephone system and most of the railroad tracks. It was the Guatemalan leaders that allowed it to happen, mostly Manuel Estrada and Jorge Ubico. Well, in 1944, coincidentally, the same year the Chiquita brand was introduced and sales were growing, the Guatemalan Revolution was taking place. As part of it, Jorge Ubico was forced out of office, and the country was now set to hold fair democratic elections, which was not great for United Fruit. Their second elected leader, Jacobo Arbenz, became a real issue for them. He started something called Decree 900. It was a policy where the government would force large landowners, like United Fruit, to sell their uncultivated land to the government, where it would then be distributed to smaller farmers, essentially taking from the rich to give to the poor. United Fruit felt that the amount that they were being offered for it was unreasonable, nor did they really want to sell it anyway. So in an attempt to prevent this from happening, they claimed that it was communism. These claims were made to the press and to President Eisenhower. And they put a spin on it, saying Arbenz was a communist and slowly trying to turn the country into that direction. I'll say that there was an argument that could be made. On top of redistributing the land, he was allowing the communists of Guatemala to be fairly represented. But in reality, the land redistribution may have been necessary. I mean, 70% of it was controlled by 2% of the landowners. Also, only about 0.1% of the population identified as communists, so probably not a huge threat. But you have to remember that this was during a time when the US was freaked out about communism. So any suspicion was oftentimes met with an overly aggressive response. Like what happened here, the Eisenhower administration utilized the CIA to perform an operation that ultimately caused Arbenz to resign from office and flee the country. He remained on the move until 1970 when he was found drowned in a bathtub. No one knows exactly what happened with all that, but he was known to have a terrible alcohol problem at that point. The bigger consequence of all this, of course, was the decades-long civil war that followed in Guatemala. So just to summarize this one, Guatemala had a new leader that enacted policies that United Fruit did not like. In response, they complained to President 
Eisenhower, who then had him removed, sparking decades of political unrest in the country. That is hard to follow, but I do have more. In the 1960s, United Fruit was concerned that they themselves were becoming too much like a banana republic. They were very reliant on bananas, so they set out to diversify. In 1966, they bought A&W, the root beer brand that's famous for their soft drinks and fast food restaurants. The next year, they bought Baskin Robbins, both of which, by the way, are previous topics of videos on this channel, and both were later sold. The reason that they were sold is because in 1970, this guy Eli Black bought United Fruit and made some big changes. He merged it together with his existing meat company, changed the name to United Brands, and set them on a course of dropping their other existing brands. It was a big change, and personally, I don't trust someone who would want to buy this company, and maybe I shouldn't, because in 1975, more crazy stuff happened. The death of the CEO. In February of that year, he died when he jumped out of the 44th floor of a building in New York. He broke the window with his briefcase, jumped out, and died. At the time, it was speculated that he was overworked. The business was having tough times, the banana export taxes were cutting into their profits, he was putting in 18-hour days to counter it, and the stress got to him. But a few weeks after it happened, it was found that he had authorized a bribe. United Brands paid the president of Honduras over a million dollars to reduce those export taxes that were giving them so much trouble. And the press indicated that there were other similar bribes as well. Just putting the pieces together, one would think that the two events are related. But either way, the facts are, within a month's time in 1975, their CEO jumped out of a window and it was uncovered that the CEO was bribing foreign officials, both of which are very controversial. Probably the biggest one of recent times was when they did business with terrorists. They admitted to it when they said they paid about $1.7 million between 1997 and 2004 to the Colombian organization, the AUC, who was involved in drug trafficking and was recognized as a terrorist organization by the United States. They said that they made the payments in return for protection of their workers, and in 2007, agreed to a $25 million fine because of it. Supporting terrorism is a controversial move. Let me know in the comments, are you ever going to look at this company the same way again? You just hate to think of all this when you look at that blue sticker. And trust me, there is more. The list could just about go on forever, picking out every little thing, but I'd say these are the most notable. If I fail to mention something that you think is significant, let me know about it. But please, be kind about it. I know this is a topic that people feel strongly about, and I understand it, but try and keep it calm. I'd like to hear what you have to say. Thank you for watching.